Welcome to another episode of The Voice of Apache. My name is Rich Bowen. One of the planners for the Community Over Code conference in Bratislava was Ryan Scraba, who is a member of the Apache Software Foundation and has been involved for a few years. And I got a chance to talk with him about how he first got involved in open source. So, hello, my name is Ryan. Uh, I am a sort of, a, I don't think I'm unique, but I might be a different case. I started open source pretty late in life, so I was already in my mid-40s in uh, 2018. So I am a capable engineer, I was a capable engineer, I can do bug fixes, I can do features, and I used open source all the time in work, like constantly, especially I was doing big data. But why wasn't I doing bug reports? Why wasn't I fixing bugs? Why wasn't I making new features that I wanted in open source you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago? That would have been possible. And I, I really don't know the answer. I do know that it wasn't an area that I was navigating in. It was someone else was doing that. Some very smart people were doing that and they were doing it with their, their ways, their rituals. And if I needed a bug fixed, eventually it would be done. And if I needed a feature, either it would be released one day or, you know, who was I to decide that this feature was important enough for the world, for the community? It's interesting. Uh, it's, it's not really a barrier. It's more of a mental block, a mental separation of being, uh, and, and na it, navigating is really the right word. So what happened was uh, I was looking for a new way of working, of being an engineer that was a bit more human. And I had a mentor who really helped me with some really simple things. I wanted to make a change to a connector in a big data project. And uh, he just sat me down and said, you know, you can just make that change. And helped me do some really, really simple basic things like writing the pull request, uh, the git commit message, um, doing it in a way that was compatible with the community, that would be acceptable quickly, letting me know who would be judging me and how, and letting me know what to expect, that you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not difficult to do. Sometimes you'll get positive feedback, sometimes you'll get negative feedback, sometimes you'll get no feedback, and that can be just as rough. But the thing I really learned was, you know, having someone help you through it for the first time is the step in the door, and that's a huge leap through this barrier. And the other thing I learned is that just being present and just doing these things over and over makes it really, really easy to learn. It makes it easier to commit, to make, uh, to make contributions. It makes it easier to make the change you want to see in the code. So my first question is, was this mentor somebody already engaged in the project or was it just somebody that was wise in the ways of open source in general? I would have to say both. Okay. It was, uh, it was, I was at a job where we, we had an open source office and it was someone in the team that was exclusively doing open source and they were doing a project that was relevant to our company and even spearheaded, contributed to widely, but I was on the part of the, the company that was using it. So it was, it was a really good interface, a really good introduction and it was actually one of the reasons why I decided to only do open source for the rest of my career. How did that come about? And, and more importantly, if, if somebody's already engaged in a project, mm -hmm. what, what do they need to do to jump into the mentor role? Because that can be kind of both intimidating and also it feels like it's not my place to go hunt someone down and, and, uh, and say, you need my help. That is also a very good question. And I kind of wonder specifically for me what made me think that I needed a mentor, uh, if it was just available. If I was, yeah, I would love to do that for other people. And I have done that for other people. Uh, I have specifically at my job, we've opened up an off open source office hours to people outside of open source. And it's, it's really good because we're all distributed, so it's good for us. So sometimes we just go there and hang out and chat and no one shows up. And that's literally what office hours used to be. You'd be in the office at a certain time, anyone could find you there. I would say that's probably a good soft way inside a company, you know, inside the people you actually work with, a good soft way to say, hey, if you want to do a commit, if you want to make a change, you can, and we are here. Uh, anytime, just drop in. It's no big deal. It really isn't. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you for, for listening.